In this section we're going to re-examine limits, and uh, we've already seen them before in the course, mainly just understanding what a limit is uh, graphically, but we're going to move more towards understanding limits algebraically. And so first is just a reminder what the definition or the informal definition of a limit is. So the definition is the limit of f of x as x goes to a equals l means that f of x gets arbitrarily closer to l as x gets arbitrarily close but not equal to a. So one term you might want to we might want to clarify is uh, you know this phrase arbitrarily close but that that just means as close as you want to get okay and um, so if you look I mean if you look at our picture here if I was interested in what the limit of f of x was as x went to a you imagine you you imagine yourself on the graph moving towards a while staying on the graph and you take note of which y value you're approaching now technically you need to consider what value you're approaching from both sides so if I plant myself on the graph on either side of A and then start moving closer to A but stay on the graph you can see that I'm approaching the Y value L and so that limit is equal to L similarly the limit as X goes to B in this picture we imagine ourselves planting or stepping onto the graph someplace surrounding uh, next to B and we start moving closer to B while staying on the graph so I'm going to be moving to the right approaching B and what Y value am I approaching? M and then of course I should if there's more graph over here I'd be approaching from both sides and making sure that they agree one thing to note is that the limit as X goes to A of F of X is equal to L even though there's no point there because limits really center on this idea of what what you're approaching not what not what's actually there whereas we're, as we approach B there is a value there but that's really not significant at all the, the the important point is what are we approaching as we start to use some algebra on these limits these properties here are, are pretty useful so I'm not going to go through them one by one um, you have them in front of you we're going to apply them in the example on the next page uh, I think that's more more useful than just going through this one by one. So let's say we've got uh, information about these functions f and g. We've got that the limit of f of x as x, x goes to 5 is 6 and the limit of g of x as x goes to 5 is negative 3. And now we're asked to evaluate these these limits here. Um, I'm going to be very very formal when I do this using all the properties one step at a time although I think you'll start to realize that the, the computations can often be done in your head but still I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see the rigor here so I'm gonna write it all out so the first thing we can notice is we can use the sum and difference rule by breaking this up into two limits and it's it's almost you can almost view it as like distributing the the, the limit side or the limit sign I should say all right so that's the limit of 3 f of x minus the limit as x goes to 5 of 2 of g of x and again if you look at the, the properties I just listed that's just the sum and difference property and now the next property we can use is that 3 can move to the front that 2 can move to the front so that I get 3 times the limit as x goes to 5 of f of x minus 2 times the limit as x goes to 5 of g of x and now we're basically we're almost done we just need to substitute in these values do we know what this is yes we do and do we know what this is yes we do 
Yeah, the first box is the limit as x goes to f of x, which is 6. So this is equal to 3 times 6 minus 2 times negative 3, which equals 18 plus 6, which is 24. All right, so pretty straightforward, more writing than anything. Let's do the next one. I've got the limit of a product. According to my product rule, that's just the product of the limits. So that means I can write this. And you may wonder why I'm showing this work. I'm showing this work because technically what we have right here, right, we have to use the properties in order to do a proper substitution of values that I have listed above. So that's why I'm, I'm actually being pretty pretty formal about this. But now we know what this value is, right? That's negative 3. And we know that this is a 6. So we have negative 3 times 6, which is negative 18. All right, let's finish with this last one. We've got the limit of a, of a quotient. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. You can write that as the limit as x goes to 5 of that numerator, which is negative g of x, divided by the limit as x goes to 5 of that denominator, which is 3 times f of x. And now I can use that constant property by moving that negative out front, moving that 3 out front, to get me negative the limit as x goes to 5 of g of x divided by 3 times the limit as x goes to 5 of f of x. And now I can substitute those values. So I got negative, g, the limit is of g of x as x goes to 5 is negative 3, so I got a negative negative 3. And then the bottom I got 3 times 6, which is 18. So at the end of the day, the final answer is 3 out of 18, or we can call that 1 sixth. So there's a, a few examples of how to use these properties of limits in order to uh, evaluate expressions like this.